We're back searching for another game. We are against the king. <laughs> and we'll give our opponent king eight, I guess. We leave open a lot of fours. Oh, that's nice. And maybe playing the 10 there leaves a safer 6, but thought it was possible that they had 5s. So ace 2 2 works with the king, or we can just leave ace 2 2 together. Let's do that. And we get rewarded. Very nice. And we pair their ace for 31. Very good. Nineteen to twenty-four. We're a little bit ahead, but still um, our opponents in a really nice position and they get a five on top. Always tough. Let's see. Do they have low cards? Well, they've got an ace, so potentially they've got a four and hopefully no six. Thirty-three to thirty-two. They're starting to fall behind a little bit. Although we're now giving them a chance to catch back up. Oh, three, four. Not two, three, as I was expecting. Sorry, three, five instead of two, three. Oh, and we have the triple. <laughs> Up to 20. And we probably both have twos here. No, we didn't have two. And a lot of points in the crib when they throw away double eight. Nice. Oh, no, we throw away eight ten and they throw away six eight. We're going to go five queen here. We leave open the tens for the double run. And we'll go to 19. Triple king five for our opponent makes 12 points. Takes them above 70. Quite a big score for our opponent, puts them back into a good position. We can't really keep this flush, it's too much asking too much, but we can throw away 7 10 or 9 10. And we'll see if they want to play a 7 here or something. No, 8 3. They're sort of signaling a 4. No, they don't have fours. They've got eight, three, three, six for four points. And uh, we've got two, four, nine, nine for six points. Eighty-five, eighty-five. Do we want to pair this? I'm going to say no. It's really bad to get tripled here. Really bad. 
But it would have worked out. Playing this a little short of 96. But we do expect them to get some big scores sometimes. So. Oh, and we've they've got a pair of three in the crib. Let's see what happens. Okay, we have triple ten. We have an ace. They have two aces. No. Eight, nine, ten, ace for only three points. Oh, but it's a flush. That flush seems important. Only 11 points away now. They could get this. And in this position, I'm not really struggling for points. I just want playability. So we'll throw away the pair of queens. Um, and if you think about it, I've still got seven points that I've seen. So I'm going out. It's only our opponent that we need to worry about. So let's say they've got... A double run here that is well, well we're already losing to a double run so if they have things like aces maybe they make maybe we're making those win now okay well we already lost to that hand so that is a good game let's see the final results we got a few more points on the play we lost out a few points in hand and in the crib. Okay, that was a good game. Let's roll it back. Let's have a little look at this position here. I think in the game I articulated we want to keep ace-2-2 two, two together. And we threw away king-king to keep two points. Now, king-king is it's worth two points, but it's quite inert in the crib. That is... It doesn't combo with many cards at all. What's the chance our opponent throws away Jack Queen, say? So I think here, actually, the play is probably to throw away six King of Diamonds. We keep uh, Ace-2-2 two, two open, and as in the game, if we hit a three, then we make many more. Not only do we get a double run, but we also hit tons of combos of 15. So... I think that's a slight improvement. The, the only thing is that you have to realize is that we're sacrificing two points from the pair, but we get back our two points immediately from the ace-2-2 two, two king collection of five. So we're not really sacrificing any points in the moment. Uh, often it's good to keep pairs, but in this case we really don't need to do that because we're, we're thinking about the low cards comboing with our king to give us 15s. Also, if we hit a 4 here, we get some more points um, from that instead of getting... Uh, well, actually, a 4 still gives us 2 points as well if we keep the 6. It's mostly about when we hit the 3s, how many 15s do we get from that. The one last thing I want to touch on is what I said in the final, uh, in the final decision, or in the final play. So at this moment, we had we have to think here very carefully. So the score is 112 to 114. We need to try and work out which hands we're beating. So our opponent has a lot of different hands here, and the collection of all of their hands, together with the probability, is called their range. So the range our opponent is sort of indicating to us by playing two and four it leads us down the path of narrowing their day range down to double runs with threes, with a three and either another two, three or four. However, all of those hands we already lose against because all of those hands score more than eight point, um, nine or more points, which takes them to 121. And so the nice thing is we can exclude those hands from the hands that we're really playing against right now. And that leaves us with hands that have a 3 in them and some other cards. So, for instance, if they had a 3 and a 10 here, then their hand would be worth 7 points. That takes them up to 119. Um, but the thing is, 
Oh, and they could have a Jack of Hearts. That would take that would give them eight points, taking them to 120. It's those kinds of hands that we really need to play against here. But no matter what we do, we're always always beating those hands. Right? If we play an ace here and our opponent plays a three, then we play a ten, we get a go, and they play their ten first, and so they have no chance to double their ten. And similarly, if we play our ten now, they play their three, we play our ace, they have to, uh, no matter what happens, our opponent always is leading their ten, or they're getting one point on the play. Actually, the only way that our opponent could win with that hand is if we started by playing our ace, our opponent plays their 10, which would have to be the Jack of Hearts, we say go, and our opponent plays a 3, then our opponent gets 1 point for the go, and they would have 8 points in their hand, uh, which would take them to 121. Now that's a very specific line, they, our opponent doesn't have that very that particular hand very often, but because it doesn't take any effort on our part to uh, play against that hand as opposed to maybe some other hands, we should probably go for a 10 here. Now the only reason not to go for a 10 would be because our opponent has a 6, a six in their hand and a 6 that doesn't make uh, enough points right now. So what kinds of hands would that be? Well... If our opponent has 6-9 in their hand, so their opponent their, their hand is 2-4-6-9, and they got a 6 on top, this would mean that their hand would be worth 8 points. And so if we play our 10 now and they go 6, they get 31, which is 2 points, and that makes them win. Is there any way to avoid that? No, because if we play our ace now, then they could play 9, we'd have to say go at 25, and they would play their 6 for 31. So they can always force, force uh, themselves to get more points, so that hand goes from something that we might be able to beat to something we can't beat, so we can, we can put those hands in the hands of uh, unbeatable hands. Any other ways that they could, that we have to think of other ways that they could have a six in their hand in, and not have enough points. Um, but they would get enough points if we played the ten. And I'm struggling to think of things like that. Things like if they had six, seven, then they would have six points in hand. And if we played ten, they would go up to, yeah, I think that the only hand that I can think of is 6-7. Six, 6-7 seven. Six, seven is worth 6 points, which takes them to 118. If we play our 10 now, well, that's the thing, it's, it's worth 6 points, but it's not worth, it's not worth 8 points, and so that so we can ignore that hand right now. It doesn't matter if they get two points on the play. If our opponent has six five, then we definitely can't beat that hand. It's it's worth twelve points. Six four. If they have six four, then that's worth four points, and it doesn't matter what we do. If they get two points extra on the play, still doesn't get them there. 6-3, well, we already lose to that hand, because that's worth uh, 3, 5, 7, 9 points. 6-Ace. Six 6-Ace six is an interesting hand. The, our opponent, if they have Ace, 2, 4, 6 in their hand, then we have to wonder, what was their original set of 6 cards? How, how could they end up keeping Ace, 2, 4, 6? And I think that the answer is, they don't do that. <laughs> if you have ace-4 and with some tens in your hand, you're probably going to keep the ace-4 with the tens. If you have 
uh, 4, 6, then it probably means you didn't have a 5. If you've got ace 2, ace 2, 4, it probably means you don't have a 3. If you've got a 6 without a 9, it probably means you started with no 9s. If you've got ace 2, 4 and no 8, it probably means you didn't have an 8 either. And ace 2, 4, 6, 7, well, if you had 2, 6, 7, you probably would have kept that. So I literally, I really literally can't think of any other cards you would have had in your collection of six cards. So I don't think ace two four six is a hand. I don't think that appears in their range at all. It has. So that means that we can ignore a six, and so that's pretty much everything else. I don't think that our opponent really has any other. Uh, any other hands with a 6 in that we have to worry about, and so we can confidently play the 10. Now, it takes a lot of analysis in order for us to get to that point, but if we want to get better at the game, we need to think of some shortcuts. How do we get there? We have to be able to imagine uh, going through this logic in a in a quick way. So we imagine, our, we, we say, why can't we play a 10 here? The reason why we can't play a 10 is because our opponent would have a 6. If our opponent has a 6, which hands are we not beating? We have to quickly go through a few hands and get the impression that the only hands uh, that we're not beating that score 8 points would be 6-9. And then we see immediately that we always give up points to 6-9. And so we can play a 10 confidently. We don't have to think too much about aces and pairing our aces here so the correct decision i think was to play the ace and in the and i think that yeah we we don't really give up too much by playing the ace either if our opponent pairs it then i don't i can't think of too many hands similarly that the score eight points that have an ace in right now Maybe if they have ace three, I mean that's that's six points that doesn't get them there. So yeah, ace ace three we're still beating ace three even if they pair our ace. Oh, oh wait, do they get three? Do they get a point for the go? So we play ace here. They play ace, kind taking us up to. 17 we play 10 they play three get the go they get three points takes them up to 115 and then uh, they score six points for their hand and we lose yeah so so because of that as well i think that oh but we have to check as well how do we go what happens when we play the other line so if we play 10 first and our opponent plays three taking us to 118 we play our ace they pair the ace and they get the go as well. They're always, they're almost always pairing our ace. The only time they don't do that is when we go to our, when we play ten and they play ace. But and that can happen. That happens more often in this position than in in positions with lower scores. Uh, why is that? It's because so we play our ten to get to 25 and our opponent say has ace three left in their hand usually you play a three there you want to make the score higher and you want to avoid 26 because or because we have we have a lot of fives in our hand but yeah you, you normally want to avoid 26 but because we're in the end game, we have fewer fives in our hand. Because fives are not as useful in the end game. So in the end game, you want to keep car some cards that are higher, some cards that are lower, and you want to keep, you know, maybe one card that's in the middle. Maybe one, six, seven, or eight. Occasionally a five if you really need to, but 
you would do that more if you're the player that's about to go out and you need an extra point or two. If you're the player defending, then five isn't particularly good for defense. The player that's trying to play offensively will keep a five in order to pair any ten, or to go, with, to go and get 15 off a ten. So, yeah, we're going to... We're going to assume here that um, our opponent knows all of this and is very happy to play their ace and, or not very happy, but they play their ace some of the time because they know that with a defending player, we don't have as many fives. So if we go 10, it goes up to 25, there's a chance our, our opponent plays their ace and then we pair it. They get the three, they get the go but the six points in their hand only takes them up to 119. So then maybe that's, that's something that makes a slight difference. So in all of the different hands that we've checked, it turns out that playing the 10 or the jack is always the best option. So I think that's what we should do. And in this position, I would, I would play the 10. But only after a lot of analysis. I think during the game, I played the ace, but that's because I didn't really see what the, differ what the difference was. Um, and so I think this was quite useful. Anyway, I will see you all next time.